Hey everyone, thanks for watching today's video. We're gonna look at policy as code in Databricks and what that means for you as a data producer in your organization. So here's an example of a table I've recently created that I've loaded into Databricks. We're gonna walk through Immuta and how Immuta can integrate with your ETL pipelines using something called policy as code, where you can use all the full functionality of Immuta to help build policy that goes along with your data as you create it. So if I show you an example policy here, where we wanna mask all financial personally identifiable information, you can see that the language here we use inside of Immuta is easy to understand and easy to maintain. So today I'm gonna to show you how we can do this with the Databricks dataset directly from your Databricks notebook. There's a couple things, just a, a little setup I'm gonna show you really quickly, but I've already built some functions inside of this Databricks notebook in Python that will help us do some stuff with Immuta. So I've kind of built some simple wrapper scripts. All of the API calls I'm showing listed here are actually contained in a Swagger API on the Immuta UI. So let's go ahead and get started. You can see I'm gonna give it the Immuta URL and I actually have a API key that you get within Immuta that you can set up to use so you can interact with our API. And so I've set those as secrets. And then I'm just gonna create a connection with Immuta so I can pass that to my, my function. So first thing I'm gonna do is make sure this is registered within Immuta. All of this detail here is actually Immuta specific, so we're gonna need this ID 24 for later. Let's see if there are currently any policies or what rules are currently set for users to get access to this table. So you could build this policy directly inside of Databricks. So what I wanna do is show you there's a workflow here where we actually allow users to either build a policy in our UI, or you can build it with this programmatic way I'm gonna show you in a minute that will actually show up in the same familiar, understandable way in the Immuta UI. So if you need to have like approvals from your ETL, you know, you create your data, you build a policy on it, then there's somebody responsible for that policy. It'll show up inside of Immuta that can actually approve or deny this policy in a, a UI that's easy to understand. So for example, you can see when I run this query here to say, hey, show me what policies are set on this credit card table. We're actually gonna look at something called the subscription policy. And that's basically, do you get to see the table and query it or not in Databricks? And so here's an example where it says, okay, you have to be in a department of analytics or in a department of finance. And these departments are actually attributes of the user, in this case, coming from an identity management system. This could be role membership. You could actually do something called purpose-based where users actually have to agree to a data term uh, a data use agreement before they're able to access this information. But in this case, we can see there's actually subscription policies. Anyone in analytics and finance are gonna see it. And now the cool thing here is that this is a very good cross collaboration example where I actually had a data owner come in here and build this financial subscription policy. And you can see it's the same thing we just looked at where it says anytime my user has an attribute of analytics or an attribute of finance, they can see any data set that's been classified with a credit card number. And so that's why it's applying to this table is that we know there's a credit card number inside this data set. And so let's go back and tell them you did actually run this so we can see how this works. So for example, we have this sensitive data detection um, command here, and I'll just show you what this looks like. That sensitive data detection will actually go out and sample this information and figure out what type of information is contained in it. We also allow you to build your own classifiers here if you wanted to add this programmatically through our API. You can also tell Amita, hey, go look at an Alation or a Calibra or some other external catalog system that contains this information, and we can pull it in that way as well. And so now these objects are available, users will be able to see that. And so what I'm gonna do now is show you how to do this programmatically. So for example, I'm gonna go ahead and run this and this will take a, just a minute and then we'll be able to actually see what the output looks like once this comes back. And so I'll fast forward this, this might take a couple minutes because it's gonna run queries for each one of those columns to figure out um, what type of information's in there. Okay, awesome. So now you can see the command came back. It took just a little bit of time, but it went through and profiled all the different columns. So, and so what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna look for the specific credit card number field and see how Immuta classified that. So if I run this while loop here, this is actually gonna go through and loop out what type of classifiers we found inside of our example. And so now you can see in this particular case, we actually discovered it's a credit card number, but it's also classified as PCI. And so again, this was automatically determined by Immuta, but now we're gonna build a policy where we wanna say, hey, anytime we find a credit card number, we wanna mask it for anyone. And so here's an actual example of a policy that you can build in YAML or in JSON, where this is basically gonna say, okay, we wanna mask all credit cards, so that's gonna show up in the Immuta UI. Anytime we find this classifier, this discovered entity credit card number, we're actually gonna mask it using a hash. So now that I've defined this, I'm gonna again call the Immuta API to create this policy um, behind the scenes. So if I go ahead and turn this on, you'll see that the policy got created 
And now we can just double check that this policy is actually active. So if I run this query, Immuta will give back, hey, you can see the mask all credit cards, and here's the rules if you actually want to unnest this to get out the information. But now if we go back into Immuta, go back to the policies, policies page, you'll see there's a mask all credit cards policy here. The nice thing is, is now that it's turned on, you can actually click this and you'll see every time it's been applied. So if I go back into Databricks now and run a query as my user after this policy has been applied, you can see now the credit card number is being masked using hashing, but that was a quick example of Amuta as code. I hope you found this demo video useful. For more information, check out the description where you'll find contact information, Amuta's website, as well as our documentation for all the APIs I showed you here. Thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day.